How's it going, River of Life? My name's Colin. I am the new tech director and assistant worship director at River of Life. I'm really excited to be able to talk to you guys today for Dave's Devos. So today we're going to talk about the spirit, and this is going to be basically like three base points that I think that everybody should understand before they approach the spirit and who he is and to fully grasp everything that he has for us. Now, these things can be simple, but they do not lack importance. Um, for instance, the first one, the spirit is one with God. Now, Paul talks to the Corinthians about this because uh, they had a problem with paganism um, and they were oftentimes confused about who was what and all of those things. And so they didn't want to get, Paul didn't want the Corinthians to be distracted um, by the Spirit. He wanted them to realize that the Spirit is part of God. It's not something that you should worship as its whole uh, own entity. It's a, it's one with God. And so the, it's super important that we understand this because if we don't, we can put the Spirit on a back burner. Whereas we look at the Father and we look at Jesus and we, most of us can see like the clear necessity that we have in order to put them up on on the pedestals that they literally do belong on and the spirit can often be forgotten within those and i'm not saying that all of you or river of life at all has an issue specifically with this i just think the church as a whole can can oftentimes forget the importance of the spirit and if we realize that the spirit is one with god we will never forget the importance of the Spirit. The Spirit is the part of God that we interact with. As the Father and the Son reside in heaven, the Spirit is the one who is interacting with the world. He's the one that we get to talk to. He's the one that who resides in us and who renews us daily. He's the one who tells us what is right and what is wrong and um, just reveals the character of God to us. And so with that as our base of thinking through these next two topics, we can really try to understand um, more the importance of the Spirit. The next thing I want to focus on is the Spirit as the one who brings community. Now in verse 13 of 1 Corinthians 12, we can read, For all were baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and all. We were all given the one spirit to drink. Now, oftentimes we can think that we are the ones that bring community to the church. Spirit leaders or spiritual leaders or church leaders, they can, they can think that they create these groups and that they're responsible for the community that is brought within through them, like, like men's devotionals or women's groups or young adults, youth group, any of those things. And we can look at those as church leadership and all of that. And we can get distracted by the numbers uh, that people are doing and that those groups are gathering in. And we can look at that and be, oh, I was successful in being able to bring this community together. But we cannot forget that the spirit is the one that brings community in the church. He's the one responsible for it all. And if we have him as the center of the community, that's when true fruition of spirit, spiritual fruits will come forth with the distraction of church leadership looking at numbers and being like, oh, that was, that's a successful group that I created because of the numbers that it's providing. Or as members of groups, we can get distracted by things like popularity or am I truly being... Um, someone who supports this group or am I being left out or anything of, of that sort. We can get distracted by those things if we don't have the spirit as the center of what community is about and what that group is about. In 1 Corinthians 12, we can see the body analogy, the, the unique and diverse yet unified body that Paul brings up in 1 Corinthians 12. And we see that the spirit is truly responsible for all of this and it wouldn't be possible without the spirit. The next thing I want to talk about is the spirit and understanding scripture. In 1 Corinthians 12, 3, we can read, Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one, say, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And this is really just telling. There's not much else to say besides the fact, besides what is said here. The Spirit is the one who helps us understand. And if we don't have the mindset that the Spirit is one with God, if we don't have the mindset of the Spirit and who He is and 
how beautiful all of those things are. We will never truly understand what it means when it talks about the salvation that Jesus brings us, when it talks about how God can truly renew us in who we are. If we come with without the Spirit as our base of, of thinking and without it being our base of understanding and belief, we can come with biases and presuppositions. While we still will come with those things, if we have the Spirit, we it gives us motivation to be able to address those things. It gives us motivation to be able to look at the history of Scripture. It gives us motivation to just be more and more accurate about when we study Scripture. So with all of these things, we're looking at how the Spirit is being one with God, how the Spirit is really the creator of our communities and the Spirit and understanding of Scripture. The Spirit is the one that we have interaction with on our day-to-day -day life. It's the one who tells us everything about Jesus and everything about God in our life right now because we don't have uh, physical interaction with them except the Spirit. So as you guys go throughout your week and as you come with the new holidays coming up and, and the new year and all of those things, face this new year with the Spirit. Realize that the Spirit is the one who's responsible for it all. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day and thank you for this opportunity.